Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Today we are looking at, well, the future of search, really. Hmm, yeah. OpenAI just dropped a pretty big update to ChatGPT. They did. It's called ChatGPT Search and, uh, well, it lets ChatGPT actually search the web in real time. Yeah, it's not just using, you know, the data that it was trained on anymore. Right, exactly. So, like, if you're asking about, say, the latest news, yeah, it can pull in articles from, I don't know, like the New York Times or the BBC. Hey, CNN. Yeah, whatever. And, and give you, like, the most up-to-date info. They can even tell you the weather. Oh, yeah, right. Like, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Or uh, Stock prices. Stock prices, exactly. So we've got uh, a couple of sources to help us unpack all this. We've got yeah. OpenAI's, uh, th their own announcement, of course. Right. And then this really interesting article from Forbes. Yeah, it's got some great analysis, and uh, they talked to a couple of AI experts, too. Okay, so... First things first, how does this thing actually work? Well, ChatGPT will now kind of automatically decide when it needs to search the web. Okay. Based on like what you're asking it. So So it's not just relying on its own like internal knowledge base anymore. Right, exactly. And here's the really cool part. Okay. You can actually see the sources that it's using. Wait, really? Yeah, like right there in the chat. I'll show you the links. So it's like we can actually peek into ChatGPT's brain and see mm -hmm. like how it's coming up with the answers. Yeah. One AI expert, Connor Grennan, he's the chief AI architect at NYU Stern. Okay. He called it reading chat GPT's mind. Oh, that's a great way to put it. It is. And I think that also, that's huge for like building trust, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you can, you know, you can check the sources yourself. Right. You're not just taking chat GPT's word for it. Exactly. But, you know, I think what's most exciting to me is how this could change the way we actually learn well, and I mean, find information online. It could, for sure. Because like... Think about how much time we waste just sifting through, oh, I know. Endless search results, trying to find like that one it's the word. that one nugget of information, yeah. you know? Yeah. And chat GPT search could just cut through all that noise. Yeah. It just gives you the answer. And gives you the sources too. And you can and you can go deeper if you want to. Exactly. If you want to like really explore the topic further, mm -hmm. you've got those links right there. And, you know, OpenAI is really betting big on this. Yeah. They actually said that they think ChatGPT search could become, wow. like, the primary way that people access information in the future. That's a pretty bold statement. It is, but, I mean, I can kind of see where they're coming from, you know? Yeah. We're already so used to just, like, asking ChatGPT questions oh. and getting quick answers. Yeah, it's super convenient. So this is, like, a natural next step. Yeah, totally. And yeah. to... To make sure they're giving us, you know, good information. Right. They've actually partnered with uh, some big names in media and data. Yeah, like the Associated Press. Oh. Axel Springer. Oh, wow. Yeah, some real heavy hitters. So we know we're getting, like, quality stuff. Yeah, up-to-date, reliable information. Not just random websites or whatever. Exactly. But, you know, the question on everyone's mind is, is this the end of Google? Hmm. The Google killer, huh? Is this it? Have they finally met their match? Well, one AI expert, Sabrina Romanoff, she thinks Google will probably adapt. Okay. She's an AI entrepreneur. Right. And she says Google's pretty good at, you know, staying ahead of the curve. Yeah, Google always seems to find a way. But another expert, Connor Grennan, uh -huh. he thinks Google might have to make some pretty drastic changes to really compete with this. Like, what kind of changes are we talking about? Well, he even said that they might have to, like, kill their traditional search model. Wow. That would be huge. It would. And it could have a big impact on their ad revenue, too. You yeah. know? Well, because that's how they make most of their money. It's a big deal, for sure. So it's still early days, but it seems like even Google's own AI... Oh, you mean Gemini. Yeah, Gemini okay. recognizes that ChatGPT search is a real contender. It's a real game changer, for sure. It's like we're at this crossroads, you know? Yeah, I see what you mean. The way we search for and consume information is about to change. Yeah, it feels like a big shift is happening. And ChatGPT search is leading the charge. It's at the forefront, for sure. And what's really fascinating is that, you know, it's not just about technology. Yeah. It's about a shift in, like, our relationship with knowledge itself. Hmm. That's interesting. I think we should dive into that a bit more. Definitely. We've got so much more to uncover. We do. But I think we've laid a good foundation here. I think so, too. For understanding what ChatGPT search is and why it's, you know, yeah. why it's such a big deal. Absolutely. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, before we move on, you know, when we were talking about the Google killer thing, yeah. we actually asked 
Google's AI Gemini for its take on ChatGPT search. Oh, really? What did what did it say? Well, it was, you know, pretty diplomatic. Okay. It basically acknowledged that ChatGPT search is uh, a, a pretty useful tool, yeah. that it can save people time mm -hmm. by giving them information right there in the chat. I mean, yeah, that's definitely a big plus. Right. No more clicking through a bunch of links. Exactly. You just get what you need. Right there in the conversation. Crap. Super convenient. And uh, Gemini even suggested that uh, this could be OpenAI's way of uh -uh. trying to get a bigger share of the search market. Which, of course, Google has dominated for, like, ever. Right, for a long time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, disruption can come from anywhere. That's true. That's true. Gemini was careful to say that it's, you know, too early to say mm. if this is the end of Google search. Okay. Google's got a huge user base yeah and really sophisticated algorithms mm -hmm. they've been doing this for a while they have but Jim and I did point out that chat GPT search it offers a pretty different kind of experience yeah yeah it does. one that might appeal to you know to people who are looking for something more conversational yeah more intuitive yeah exactly and let's not forget the power of you know OpenAI's brand. That's true. And ChatGPT's popularity. Yeah, they've already got a ton of users. Millions of people are using it. So adding search to that yeah. just seems like a natural... A natural progression. Yeah, yeah. It's like they've built this incredible rocket ship, right? Okay. With ChatGPT. Yeah. And now they're adding this supercharged engine. With search. With search, exactly. To like really blast it off. To take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah, I like that analogy. But, you know, thinking about it, it's not just about... Yeah. One search engine replacing another. Right. It's bigger than that. This is about like a fundamental shift. Okay. In how we interact with information. How we find it. How we find it. How we understand it. Exactly. Instead of just typing in keywords right. and hoping for the best. Right. And then like wading through pages of results. Yeah. We're having this like back and forth with AI now. Like a conversation. It is. We're asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. And getting, you know deeper answers. Answers that go beyond just the surface level. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's about using AI to not just find information, mm -hmm. but to really understand it. To make it meaningful, yeah. Yeah, to synthesize it. That that brings up an interesting point, though. Yeah. As we rely more and more on AI for information, mm -hmm. what does that mean for like our own critical thinking skills? Mm, that's a good question. Are we are we becoming too passive? Yeah, we're just accepting what the AI tells us. Yeah, without really like questioning it. Yeah, that's where I think open AI's focus on transparency is really important. Okay. Because by showing us their sources, yeah. they're giving us the tools to like verify the information ourselves. Right. To do our own fact checking. Yeah. To form our own opinions. It's like they're saying, hey, don't just take our word for it. Right. Go go check it out yourself. Do your own research. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And, you know, this commitment to transparency, Yeah, it's not just good for us, the users. Okay. It also aligns with journalistic integrity. Which is something that OpenAI has talked a lot about. They have. They've been very vocal about that. So it's about creating a system where AI can help us find information mm. more effectively, yeah. but also encourages us to be, like, more discerning. More thoughtful. Yeah, about what we're consuming. Exactly. So... I want to shift gears a little bit here okay. and think beyond just the search engine battle. Okay, yeah. What kind of impact could chat GPT search have on other industries? Ooh, that's a big question. It is, it is. Well, we talked about how it could disrupt search, mm -hmm. but think about, like, education. Oh, yeah. Imagine students being able to have, like, real-time conversations okay. with AI tutors that can answer their questions. Explain concepts. Yeah. Even create personalized learning materials. It would be like having like yeah. a world-class expert available like 24-7. Right there at your fingertips. That's amazing. It is. And what about research? Oh, yeah. I mean, think about scientists and academics mm. being able to like have an AI assistant okay. that can analyze data. Yeah. Find relevant studies. Sure. Summarize key findings. Or be like a like a super powered research librarian. Oh, that would be amazing. Who never needs a break. Yeah. Never sleeps, never gets tired. And and don't forget about customer service. Oh, right. I mean, AI powered chatbots could like yeah. understand complex requests, mm -hmm. provide personalized solutions. Even anticipate like what customers need before they even ask. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> it could revolutionize so many areas. It really could. It could make things so much more efficient. More accessible. Yeah, especially for for people who maybe have difficulty with yeah. traditional search interfaces. Right, like if you have accessibility needs. This could be a real game changer for them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about like making knowledge accessible to everyone. That's a great point. But, you know, we got to be realistic mm -hmm. with any new technology. Yeah. There are always going to be challenges. Right. Potential downsides. Downsides, yeah. So what are some things that we need to be cautious about? Well, one of the biggest concerns with any AI is bias. Okay. You know, if the data that the AI is trained on is biased, yeah, those biases are going to show up in the results. And that could have some pretty serious consequences. It could, especially in areas like... You know, hiring, hiring, lending. Yeah. Where AI is being used to make these like big decisions. Yeah. Life altering decisions. I have to be very careful about that. For sure. Make sure that these systems are fair. Unbiased. And unbiased. Yeah. Another concern is that, you know, AI powered search could create these mm -hmm. uh, what are called filter bubbles or echo mm -hmm. chambers. Right. Where you're only seeing information that. Yeah. That reinforces your existing beliefs. Which is which is kind of dangerous. It is. It can lead to. Like less critical thinking. Less critical thinking. Yeah. And and a more divided society. Yeah. That's not good. We need to find ways to make sure that. That it's promoting like diverse viewpoints. Diverse viewpoints. Yeah. And encouraging people to like. To think critically. Think critically about what they're seeing. Exactly. And then there's the issue of privacy. Right. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. As AI gets more sophisticated. Like more data about us. Yeah. How do we make sure that our information is protected? It's a tough question. It's a real balancing act. It is. Yeah. Harnessing the power of AI mm -hmm. while also safeguarding our privacy. And our freedoms. Our freedoms, yeah. Yeah. It's going to require some careful thought. For sure. And a commitment to ethical development. Absolutely. But I'm hopeful we'll just... that we can find that balance. Yeah. And use this technology to you know create for, a better future for good yeah and that brings up a really important point okay what role do we as individuals yeah play in shaping this future because it's not just up to the tech companies uh, or the policy makers it's up to all of us yeah we all have a responsibility to be a part of this conversation to advocate yeah to advocate for a future where technology is used for good for good yeah and that starts with you know, staying informed, staying informed, We're asking questions, asking See? tough questions, yeah. demanding transparency, accountability, accountability from the companies you. that are developing this stuff. We're not just passive consumers. Right. We're active participants. Yeah. We have a voice. We do. We have power. We have power to shape this, to shape the future. Yeah. That's a really empowering thought. It is. And that brings us to the end of part two of our deep dive into chat GPT search. We've covered a lot of ground we have. From the potential benefits uh, to the challenges. The ethical considerations. But we're not done yet. No, we're not. In part three. We're going to explore. The long-term implications of this. The future of information access. Critical thinking. Our relationship with AI. It's going to be good. Stay tuned. <laughs> Did it be good? Stay tuned. Welcome back to our deep dive on chat GPT search. You know, with all this talk about search engines and AI and everything, mm -hmm. I just keep thinking about like, what does this all mean for us? Yeah, for us as humans. Yeah, like for centuries, we've always thought of knowledge as right. something that's like in books. In libraries. Yeah, or or from experts. We right. could literally like learn something new. But now with AI, like chat GPT search. Oh, wait, it's all around us. Yeah, it's so accessible. Almost like ambient. Ambient, yeah, like we're swimming in this ocean of information yeah. and chat gpt search is like our our high-tech snorkel <laughs> uh, but yeah helping yeah. us navigate and find what we need but you know that ease of access yeah it does raise some big questions like what what happens to our critical thinking skills Ooh, that's a good one when we have ai that can just answer any question right and summarize like super complex information right different kinds of creative content it's it's kind of scary right oh it can be yeah are we are we becoming too reliant on ai yeah are we are we outsourcing our thinking to algorithms yeah it's a valid concern yeah but here's here's another way to think about it okay maybe ai isn't replacing our thinking hmm. but it's changing how we think okay 
Remember when calculators first came out? Oh, yeah, those big clunky things. Right. Yeah, I remember those. They didn't make us worse at math. That's true. They just freed us from doing those, like, tedious calculations. Right, the grunt work. Yeah, so we could focus on, you know... <laughs> higher level stuff. Higher level problem solving. So you're saying AI could be doing the same thing for knowledge work. Exactly. Huh. Freeing us from, you know... Like the information gathering. Yeah, the research, the summarization. So we can focus on, like... The analysis. The creativity. The, the uniquely human stuff. Yeah, the stuff that AI can't do. Okay, I like that. And chat GPT search, you know, with the source citations yeah. and the conversational format. Mm -hmm. It could actually become a tool for critical thinking. Interesting. Because it helps us, you know. Evaluate different perspectives. Dig deeper. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, so instead of fearing AI, yeah. we can learn to work with it. Use it to our advantage. Use it to make ourselves better. Exactly. But I'm really curious about, like, the impact on education. Oh, yeah. Because if if students have instant access to information mm -hmm. and AI tutors, right? how do we teach them to actually learn? Yeah, how do we teach them to think? Not just consume facts. Yeah, that's a, that's a big challenge for educators. It really is because... Rote memorization is kind of pointless now. It's, it's useless. When you have AI, they can just remember everything. Exactly. So, so what's the solution? What do we do? Like, what should we be teaching kids in this, in this new world? I think we need to teach them okay. how to ask the right questions. Okay. How to evaluate sources. Mm -hmm. How to think critically. Even if the information's coming from like a Probably. seemingly all-knowing AI. Exactly. So AI becomes like less of a threat yeah. and more of a partner. The partner in learning. Yeah, in the learning process. Exactly. I like that. And think about the creative possibilities too. Oh yeah. Like imagine writers using Chat GPT search. Okay. To to research different historical periods. Mm -hmm. Brainstorm plot ideas. Generate dialogue, you yeah, bet. Different styles of dialogue. Oh, that would be amazing. It would. Or musicians exploring different genres. Yeah. Artists researching techniques. I mean the possibilities are endless. They are. But like any tool, right? Yeah. It comes down to the human using it. The human behind the tool. Yeah. Are we gonna use AI to like to enhance our creativity? Yeah, to make ourselves better. Or are we going to become complacent I see. and just let it do all the work for us? Ooh, that's a big question. It is, it is. Because AI is just a tool. It is. It can be used for good or for bad. It all comes down to our choices. Our values. Our vision for the future. Yeah, it's up to us to decide what kind of future we want. And that brings us back to you, our listener. Yes. How do you see this technology shaping the world? What are you excited about? What are you worried about? Are you embracing this or are you approaching it with caution? So these are questions we all need to be thinking about. Because they're going to shape the future that we're all creating together. Staying informed. Yeah. Engaging in these discussions. Asking critical questions. That's how we build a future where AI serves humanity. That's a great point to end on. It is. We've gone from the nuts and bolts of chat GPT search. All the way to the philosophical. The big questions. The big questions. And I hope you're walking away with more questions than answers. I hope so, too. Because those questions are what's going to drive innovation. Spark debate. And lead us to a more thoughtful and informed future. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into chat GPT search. It's been a pleasure.